Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for yet another Civilization VI Leader Spotlight, where today we'll be taking a look at Eleanor of Aquitaine, or more specifically, Eleanor of both France and England. Before we get into the video today, I would just like to uh, let you all know that I do now have both EU4 and Imperator Rome on my game store. I know that whenever I made the announcement video about it, those were two of the games that a few people had suggested I get on there, and they are now live on there. So if you're interested in picking up those games and want to support the channel, um, feel free to check out the link in the video description below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and start talking about Eleanor. Now, Eleanor is one of the more unique leaders in Civ 6, just because she is able to lead two civilizations. Um, this doesn't mean that the only thing that's really unique to Eleanor is her leader ability, so for that reason, I'm not going to go into depth on the other abilities that she has, or, you know, her unique units or tile improvements. Um, if you want to take uh, you know, take a look at those, I would suggest that you check out both the Catherine and the Victoria leader spotlights, because I talk about them in those videos instead. Um, the one that I probably will cover is England Eleanor's ability, just because it actually has changed since since um, the last time I did the Victoria video. So we're going to start off with the younger of the two Eleanors, the French Eleanor. And um, Eleanor's unique ability is known as Court of Love, and it makes it so that great works in her cities cause minus one loyalty per turn in foreign cities within nine tiles. In addition to this, a city that leaves another civilization due to a loss of loyalty and is receiving the most uh, loyalty per turn to Eleanor skips the free city step and immediately joins Eleanor's Civ. So that's a very long-winded way of saying instead of, you know, whenever a city rebels to loyalty pressure, if your loyalty is the one that made it rebel, it will immediately flip to you, it won't become a free city. That's that's really what that says. Um, but Court of Love is actually, it's, it's an insanely strong ability. Um, the only issue is that it's an insanely strong ability very late in the game if you have a lot of great works. So whenever I played Eleanor, um, by the time I got to the late game, I, I played French Eleanor and I was going for a culture victory, and by the time I got to a, the late game, I was getting like 18 or, you know, minus 18, minus 20 uh, loyalty in cities that were nearby, and there was literally nothing they can do to stop it. Like, some of them were even in Golden Ages, and their cities would still rebel and flip to me, just because of how much unstoppable loyalty pressure this is. Um, that being said, though, it does take a long time for this to actually take effect. Throughout most of the game, you're not going to feel any effect from this unless, you know, maybe uh, like towards the mid game, you can start feeling this ability a little bit because that's when you start getting, you know, maybe five or six great works. You get some great works of writing and you can kind of clump them up to maybe take advantage of an enemy city that isn't that close to um, some of their other cities, so maybe it's just barely stable. Then Court of Love uh, plays a little bit of a role, but outside of that, it takes a long time for Court of Love to work. But in the very late game, whenever it actually does work, it's an insanely strong ability. It's nearly unstoppable um, just because of the available ways that you have to deal with loyalty in the game. Once, once you're losing a lot of loyalty from Court of Love, there's really nothing you can do. Um, but as I mentioned, it does take a long time for that to actually happen. And then just because she is France, she also gets the Grand Tour ability, so she gets extra production from uh, towards uh, med medieval, renaissance, and industrial era wonders, and she gets some extra tourism as well. She also does get the Guard Imperial and the Chateau improvements. So um, French Catherine is definitely pretty culture focused. A lot of her things play towards culture, and you do have the Guard Imperial as well um, if you want to go for a little bit of domination. Let's now move on to England Eleanor, so obviously she still has Court of Love ability because that is her leader ability, um, but now she has Workshop of the World, and Workshop of the World is England's new ability in Gathering Storm, and it makes it so that iron and coal mines accumulate one more resource per turn. In addition to this, you get 100% production towards military engineers, and they receive plus two charges as well. And the last part of it is that buildings that provide an additional yield when powered will re uh, receive plus two more of that yield than they normally would. So Workshop of the World, I think, is... I'm, I'm honestly not really sure what I feel about it. I, I definitely do like the fact that iron and coal accumulate one more resource per turn. Um, a lot of the times this can make it so that you're able to upgrade units into swordsmen or, um, you know, uh, like ironclads or thing like that faster because you accumulate resources faster. Um, but the other nice thing that I found that you can do with this is actually you can use it to sell resources um, like a lot more frequently because the AI will pay you for strategic resources. So having a lot of them and getting them pretty fast can make it so that you can sell them for some decent gold. Uh, the military engineer stuff I don't really think is all that great. Um, I still very rarely ever build military engineers. I use them for railroads sometimes, but even so, railroads still don't feel like particularly strong, and nothing else that the military engineers provide is really all that worthwhile. Like, I'll, I'll never really build more than two or three military engineers in a game, because really all that I ever use them for is tunnels, which, you know, once you put down maybe two or three tunnels, then you're pretty much done with them. 
Um, the additional yields from buildings that are powered is pretty good. Um, once again, this is something that doesn't take effect until later on in the game. Um, but getting additional yields from all of your powered buildings can give you a lot of extra yields because you get you can get culture yields, science yields, production yields, um, gold yields, pretty much whatever you want you can get from this. So Workshop of the World as a whole for um, both England Eleanor and for Victoria is a pretty decent ability. I, I don't know if it's it's not incredibly strong, but it is definitely something that changes up England's playstyle a little bit. And of course, being England, um, England Eleanor also has the Sea Dog and the Royal Navy Dockyard. Um, she doesn't get the red coat, nor um, and obviously the uh, the whatever England's museum used to be obviously got removed in Gathering Storm, so she doesn't have that either. Um, but not having the red coat definitely does hurt a little bit because the red coat is actually one of the better things about Victoria England. So it does suck to not have that on England Empire or on England Empire on England Eleanor. And now it is that time where we can go ahead and talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of Eleanor and both France and England in Civilization VI. So once again, I'm not really going to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of France and England individually, but more so um, Eleanor herself and how she works with each of those civilizations. So for Eleanor's strength, um, the big thing with Eleanor is that flipping cities with loyalty is both fun and effective in the late game. So I think Eleanor's ability is one of the more fun abilities that was added in Gathering Storm because very few other leaders have the same sort of, you know, loyalty domination style thing. And it's something that I think whenever loyalty first came out, it's something that everybody was hoping that you could actually do with loyalty. But unfortunately for most other leaders, it's not really effective just because it takes too long to wait for free cities and you don't really, you're never really able to get that much loyalty pressure. Um, but with Eleanor, it is something that you actually have the option to do. It's a different play style, something fresh, something new, and it's something that's very fun, and um, it is pretty good in the late game. You can get a ton of extra cities, and um, I believe that in the game that I played as Eleanor, it's been a while since I last played her, um, but I took over probably more than half of the Egyptian Empire in the very late game just by having loyalty pressure. Like, I wasn't even at war with them, didn't have to use any military units. I pretty much just got free cities, which is very fun, and it's pretty cool to do. Um, as far as her weaknesses go, um, the one is that she is very weak until the late game on really both England and France's side because, as I mentioned, her, uh, her, her Court of Love ability doesn't really do much until you're very late into the game and you have a lot of great works because otherwise a lot of cities are just going to be able to resist the negative loyalty pressure until you have enough great works that actually makes it um, extreme enough that they are no longer able to deal with it. The other thing is just generally both France and England's abilities don't really come into effect until at least the medieval or renaissance eras, so for that first section of the game you're not really going to have much going for you, so these two leaders both do have some of the weaker starts out of the other leaders in the game. The other really big weakness of Eleanor, and this really applies to England Eleanor, is that England's playstyle does not mesh it at, like, at all with Eleanor's ability. I mean, I guess you could argue maybe it does, but ever since um, England lost their unique museum, and they're not really at, like a cultural sieve at all anymore, there's really nothing that meshes well with Eleanor's ability, because um, now England is more so focused as a domination sieve. You know, you're meant to expand onto other continents, get out your uh, your Royal Navy dockyards, play some, um, some uh, naval domination with the sea dogs, and none of that really works well with getting great works and flipping cities with loyalty. I mean, I guess you could argue that it's another, um, you know, way that you could do domination, but it's a bit of a strange one, and I don't think it works very well, unlike France Eleanor, who, you know, France Eleanor is meant to play a culture game, so you are naturally just going to be getting a lot of great works as a result, and you can use Court of Love quite effectively with her, but not so much on England. Um, you kind of have to force the play style a lot more. It doesn't come as naturally, which is one of the biggest weaknesses about England Eleanor. And now it is that time where we can go ahead and give each of these leaders their tier ranking. So what I'm going to do this time, just because we have two leaders now, is I'm just going to put both of them in the same box. Um, France uh, Eleanor is going to be blue, and England Eleanor is going to be the usual red color. So without further ado, let's go ahead and give them their domination ranking. So I think that both of these leaders deserve a B in domination. So um, obviously both of them, you're able to use the unique um, loyalty domination strategy where you get some great works and you use those to flip cities. Um, but France Eleanor does have the Guard Imperial as well, which is a pretty strong melee unit that you can get in the Renaissance era. And as I mentioned on um, like uh, Catherine's Leader Spotlight video, the Guard Imperial is a really strong military unit, and I actually wish that there was like more options to play military with France because I think it's pretty strong and something that is fun to use. So since uh, France Eleanor gets that as well, that does give her a uh, domination edge as well as the Court of Love ability. 
England Eleanor is fairly evenly matched with France Eleanor in terms of domination strength, so that's why she's going to get a B as well. So you're going to have Workshop of the World that's going to give you a bit more iron and coal to help fuel your war machine and your units. You're going to have Military Engineers that are going to have more charges, so that uh, gives you the ability to put down more tile improvements that might help with your uh, military, such as like forts or things like that, or missile silos or railroads to transport your troops. Um, and in, in addition to all this, you're also going to get the Sea Dog for some, some naval domination bonus. And you're gonna have the Royal Navy Dockyard as well, which is just very helpful whenever you're um, like whenever you're going around having a lot of harbors for some trade routes to help get you some gold to fuel your your military is also fairly uh, helpful. Um, it very much does suck though that England Eleanor doesn't get the red coat because the red coat was one of the better things about Victoria and her domination game. So losing that actually hurt England Eleanor quite a bit. Science is up next, and I think that both of these leaders are going to deserve C's. Um, I do think that England Eleanor is slightly better at science than uh, France Eleanor, just because of Workshop of the World, so that can get you a few more yields on your um, your, your research buildings. Um, I, I'm just blanking. Uh, on, on your research labs and your factories and things of that sort to get you a little bit of extra science and production in the late game, which is helpful towards science victory. Um, that being said, I don't think that bonus is quite enough to step her up in a uh, in a tier ranking in science. So for that reason, I think that they both de deserve C's. Obviously, France is going to get a C just because they really don't have any bonuses towards science, but also any uh, they don't really have any reason that's discouraging them from going from it. So that's why they're both going to get C's. Culture is up next, and I think that France is going to deserve a B, and England is going to deserve a C. Obviously, there's a lot going for France. You have the additional production towards some of the uh, mid-game wonders. You have additional tourism from wonders. You have the chateau, and you also have Court of Love as well to use that with the uh, cultural game to get you a little bit more land and territory, especially in the late game whenever you have a lot of great works. Um, that being said, though, even though they have a lot of things going for them, I don't think that France's just general attributes are particularly strong towards culture victory. I mean, don't get me wrong, they are nice, and the Chateau has been buffed recently, so I think it is a little bit better than it previously was. Um, but even so, it does. You, you still have a very weak cultural early game, um, really until you hit the Chateau and until you hit that those mid-game wonders. Um, you don't really have anything going for you culturally at all, so that's why they're not higher tier. But even so, they are still a very viable cultural sieve and something you can um, that you can definitely run culture with. Um, England, on the other hand, just gets nothing really towards culture. Um, even Court of Love, it doesn't really give you anything towards culture victory, so um, she's going to get a C in that regard. And for both religion and diplomacy, both of the leaders are going to get C's for all of the reasons why leaders normally get C's. Don't really have any bonuses towards either of those victory types, and they don't really have anything discouraging them from uh, um, from any of those as well. Um, you can maybe argue that maybe England should receive a D in diplomacy, just because now domination leaders will lose a lot more diplomatic favor from having grievances with people. Um, so she is going to be at a little bit of a disadvantage um, in that regard, but I don't think that's enough um, to push her down in a uh, ranking in diplomatic victory. So, um, for all of those reasons, these leaders are going to get C's in both of those categories. And now it's time for the overall rankings, and I think that France Eleanor deserves a C, and England Eleanor deserves a D. Um, I definitely do think that France Eleanor just kind of edges out England Eleanor in a lot of ways. Um, the big reason for this is just because of how well um, France's general playstyle synergizes with Court of Love, and England's really doesn't, you know, have any sort of impact on Court of Love, so it, it kind of just ends up being a fairly useless ability when you're playing England Eleanor, and it doesn't mesh well with her playstyle at all. Um, so for that reason, I think that um, England Eleanor just definitely deserves the D. Um, for France, Eleanor, you obviously still have the culture option, but France has never been a particularly outstanding culture sieve just because of how weak their early game, and the same goes for Eleanor. Um, I, th I do think that she actually does have a stronger late game than Catherine does, so I think she actually is a better um, cultural leader and a better overall leader than uh, Catherine is, but that being said, it's not enough of a difference to push her up into the B tier ranking, so for that reason, I think she deserves the C. She is a fairly fun leader to play, though, just because of how unique Court of Love is. So thank you everyone for watching, I've been the Saxy Gamer. if you enjoyed the video feel free to like, if not feel free to dislike. If you're looking for more Civilization 6 content feel free to subscribe, thank you for watching, and goodbye.